Well, hi again, everybody. So in part one of my video on Dawes Butler, we looked at six voices that he did in a single five-minute Fractured Fairy Tale episode. In part two, we're going to take a look at clips from multiple Fractured Fairy Tales, which really show how incredible and versatile Dawes was. Most of them are different from the voices in part one. So let's listen to Dawes' deep, gravelly father voice and his little boy voice. Now, the fatherly voice here is a little bit different from how Dawes usually does it. Normally, he sounds a little bit like Jackie Gleason. The uh, little boy voice is also different. Normally, the little boy voice sounds like Elroy Jetson from the cartoon series The Jetsons. Breakfast is ready! Mmm, looks good. Oh. Oswald, stop shouting! That wasn't me, it was Pop. Why, Bruce Bear. Hot. What? Not what? Hot is hot. It's supposed to be hot. Not that doggone hot. I thought I told you to close the door, Oswald. I did. Perhaps somebody's been here while we were gone. Oh? Uh, anybody here? Oh, what the ding-dong? Somebody's been eating my porridge. Somebody's been eating my porridge. Somebody's been eating my porridge and didn't leave spoon one. Look in the other room, Bruce. Somebody's been rocking in my chair. Somebody's been rocking in my chair. Somebody's been rocking in my chair. And were they ever heavy? Now, now, Bruce. She's only a people. She doesn't know any better. And I'll bet she sure learned a good lesson. Now let's listen to his dullard or blithering idiot or <laughs> drunkard voice, which is both funny and very colorful. You actually heard this voice already in part one. This time Dawes really goes over the top to make this character seem all the more silly and dumb. The third son was not a bit like his brothers, for he was a dullard and he was very lazy. A man out of the rain, son. Yeah, what for? For a while. A oh, boy will never amount to a hill of beans. Thank goodness. Who wants to be an old hill of beans? Then the third son came up to the shade of the old tree. Ah, this resembles a fine spot to rest. Then have my midday meal. Shee, <laughs> what a mess. Pardon me, young man, but I am very hungry and... You are? Good. Then you eat this. You mean you'll let me have your sour cheese, stale bread, and cookie? Sure, I may be dull, but I'm not crazy enough to eat that stuff, you know. So they were married. Now, ordinarily, any young man who has a golden goose and is lucky enough to marry a princess would surely live happily ever after. But such was not the case in this case. Oh, ho, 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 oh, no. <laughs> because of that dratted goose, I'll be handpacked for the rest of my life, and that's for the birds. So remember, dear friends, if you ever meet a funny little man with a long beard and a crooked nose, don't give him your sour cheese, stale bread, and a cookie, or your goose is cooked. And probably one of my favorite Dawes voices is the one that he typically uses for the con man or the scam artist. <laughs> it's the same voice that he used for Hokey Wolf in the Hanna-Barbera cartoons. In case you're curious, Dawes' inspiration for this voice was a real live actor, Phil Silvers. Sleeping Beauty Land was clearly a great success. One million and one, one million and two. Sorry, the castle's closed till 8 a.m. Hold it, Junior. I'm your land of the wicked fairy that put Sleeping Beauty to sleep. Well, <laughs> that calls for some free coupon books. Books? Look, I want half of this whole setup. Or else. Else what? Else I use my magic powers to wake her up. Well, now, we can't have that, can we, partner? And you are my partner, and the charming one at that. Now, wouldn't you like to see some of our Sleeping Beauty Land? Why not? Just step this way to Dungeon Land. My, this is spooky. Well, it's very popular. Some people stay here for a long, long time. How does it work? Well, I put these around your wrist, you see? Yes. Then I leave. Well, have a good time. I'll see you in a couple of years, kid. Last but not least, let's listen to the same voice that Dawes used for Jinx the Cat 
in the Hanna-Barbera cartoons with his mice co-stars, Pixie and Dixie. This voice is actually Dawes' imitation of Marlon Brando. He claimed that this was his favorite voice. Every day, the wife, who was to have a baby, she'd sit by the window and gaze at the rampium. Darling, I know this sounds fantastic and utterly absurd, but I have this uncontrollable desire to have a salad made from that European bellflower. You know, rampion. You mean those weeds there? Rampion, dear. And I fear I must have some or I shall surely die. All right, dear. If it's rampion you want, rampion you shall have. And so the husband sneaked to the garden wall, peered over the top, and leaped into the garden of the witch. Rampion, shmampion. It still looks like weeds to me. Whoops! Halt! You cannot move! You know you're right. You have come into my garden like a thief. Alas, be merciful. I'm only here because my wife sees your rampion. I think I'll turn you into a toad. And uh, has such a longing for it that she would die if she could get no rampion. Well, I hope you liked my tribute to Dawes Butler. I hope that you agree with me that he was an incredible talent. Mel Blanc, as talented and as gifted as he was, got a whole lot more attention than Dawes ever did with his vast body of work in Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies. Personally, I always preferred Dawes over Mel. I just thought that Dawes had more warmth to his voice, and I also always thought that there was something so very special about his creations.